For more on World AIDS Day, I spoke with Dr. Anthony Fauci. He is the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases at the U.S. National Institutes of Health. And I asked him if the new strain of HIV recently detected the first in two decades worries him. No, it doesn't worry me at all. It, it really is an outlier. It was a strain that was really identified several years ago in the 80s and then again in the 90s. And in order to declare something a new strain, you have to have three separate isolations. And the third one was delayed for several years, even though they did have the virus in hand. And it was only the more modern techniques of sequencing the virus that allowed them to identify this as the same one that they had identified on two other occasions. It does not worry me at all. It does not have any relevance. It's not widely spread, and there's no indication that it's any different with regard to sensitivity to the drugs. So bottom line is that it's a curiosity, but it doesn't worry me. It seems in the U.S. and perhaps in many parts of the West, HIV has become a manageable chronic illness, if I may say so. But in parts of the developing world, HIV isn't, and it's turning into AIDS, and people are still dying. Why the difference globally? Well, it's what I call the implementation gap. Today, we have the tools with the treatments that we have and the prevention modalities to really end the epidemic, I mean, practically speaking. It's, it, it's a theoretical capability, uh, but it's, it, it's really quite real, and all you need to do is implement it. For example, we know that if you treat someone who's infected, and you bring down the level of virus to below detectable, not only do you save the life of that person, but you make it essentially impossible for that person to transmit the virus to their sexual partner. And if you get pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP to people who are at risk but uninfected, you decrease by about 99 percent the likelihood that they will acquire HIV. So we have the tools in hand. We just need to implement. So in those countries, in which there's still a lot of infection and a lot of death due to HIV. It's because the tools that are available have not been implemented, and that's due to any of a number of factors. The healthcare systems in those countries may not be able to implement those tools that we have. And that's one of the things we're trying to improve, to make access to the tools much more widespread, particularly in countries that are underdeveloped. You referred to PrEP there, the maker of PrEP, Gilead, Big Pharma, uh, getting accused recently of charging some $2,000 a month for the supply here in the U.S., while the price in places like Australia is under $10, uh, I believe. Can you explain why that sort of structure exists and what sort of barrier that creates? Well, it certainly creates a barrier. We, we really want to make sure that PrEP is available at a reasonable price to all who need it. The, the differential in pricing that you spoke about is the availability or not of generic versions of the drug. So generic versions have a major diminution in the price compared to the versions that are sold, for example, in the United States. So in some countries, you can get a generic version, which, as you said, goes from multiple thousands of dollars to less than $100.